<sighs> okay, uh, so I feel obligated to just say that anything I say for the remainder of this video is not endorsed by the National Park Service or the federal government. Uh, just to get all the legality out of the way in case somebody sees this that doesn't like it. Um, so this is what I usually look like every day. I have my microphone on so you might see it hanging. Um, but yeah, got my own name badge. That was there the first day I got here. My regular badge. My hat. Um, I just got a shipment of all brand new personal uniform so this is my own shirt and my own pants I uh, got my radio my favorite thing in the morning once I get dressed and eat and everything once I know the day started you just slip it down and psh, it's like putting a gun in a holster except less cool but still um, if I need to write anything down in our office we write lots and lots of lists I make lots of to-do lists um, yeah, it's really handy to actually have pens on you at all times. Uh, but yeah, today was a really not particularly exciting day for campgrounds. Uh, I'm the I was the only one working, so made lots of rounds, patrol rounds. I mean, there was a few interesting things, but since I have all this built up energy, uh, I am hoping to. Let's see if I can do this. Climb to the top of the mountain in my backyard. And then I shall make the rest of the video up there. But first I need to charge the rest of the battery and get in more comfortable clothes. <sighs> okay, so uh, look at this view. Okay. So, uh, look at this view. Guess how long it uh, took me to get here. An entire day, because last night, while waiting for this battery to charge, I laid down briefly, and by the time I woke up, it was already dark. So, I had to postpone this a day. I brought my walkie-talkie, in case I get bit by a rattlesnake. Um, I'm not that far. If I move the camera, I could show you the housing. It's uh, and maybe it took me 10 minutes just to get here, but there's an incredible amount of stickers and itchy things that not only get caught in my socks, but on my legs. So I decided just not to do this in the summertime when everything's dead. Plus, this is where part of the fire happened, so a lot of stuff is burned and there's a lot of ash. But anyways, uh, I didn't really know what I would have talked about yesterday, but today... I tried to think about what I would talk about, uh, really thought about what I was going to talk about. So today I have more of an idea. So I don't know how many of you will relate to this feeling, but recently I've been getting this feeling like a slight weight on my shoulders, like a quiet disappointment that I'll never be able to know or understand what it's like to grow up anywhere other than where I have grown up. I'll never know what it's like to grow up somewhere in a big city or where it rains and snows on a regular basis. Uh, I'll never know what it's like to grow up somewhere where living isn't easy. I'll never know what it's like to grow up outside of California or the US. And uh, you only get one opportunity to grow up and mine's already been there and gone. But it's not like you have a choice in where you get to grow up, and I don't hold it against my parents or anybody. Uh, it's been quite nice, but I'm just curious what it would have been like, what it is like for other people. And I guess it's like that feeling of you're wondering what it's like in another person's shoes. So I had the opportunity this past year to meet someone at Cal Poly who was, who was born in the Philippines and she got to live in the UAE, among other places, while her family was traveling for work. And uh, she was telling me all about it. I'd always ask her how all the different places were. And now she lives in Slo to study architecture with her family. But I've always been a bit envious of people who have the opportunity to travel as a family around places and uh, 
Even my own dad traveled with my papa Frank, who was in the army, and my grandma Orfe, and they lived in Arizona, Missouri, Washington, and even Germany for a while uh, as they moved around. And my even my stepmom, she studied a year abroad in Colombia. So there's people in my immediate circle who've gotten to live outside of where they grew up. But I mean, I guess I'm not the best person to give an opportunity like this to. I probably wouldn't be able to describe the experience that I had that well. I don't even think I'd be able to describe the experience I have had growing up where I have. I guess I would say I live somewhere where the father of the girl I dated my entire freshman year uh, was the doctor who delivered me when I was born. I live somewhere where the aunt of a girl who dated my stepbrother was my uncle's girlfriend when they were in high school. I, would, I lived somewhere where the soon-to-be uh, stepmom of a girl I dated was the principal of my sister's elementary school. So I live somewhere where everything's interconnected. Uh, it's a small agricultural town at the base of some mountains that I now work in. I uh, tried to adjust the aperture so it wouldn't just blur out the background, but I think it is still a little bit blurry. Anyways, uh, sometimes I wonder how many kids in Kings Canyon Unified School District, the school district in which I grew up, uh, have been an hour away from where they live to the Kings Canyon. Um, it's not only at the Cedar Grove, but it's also farther towards Boyden Cave, which is the Kings Canyon. Uh, I guess I could sum this up with a quote from Prince Oberyn Martell in A Storm of Swords when he says, it's a big and beautiful world. Most of us live and die in the same corner where we were born and never get to see any of it. Well, I don't want to be most of us. So no offense to anyone who hasn't lived anywhere else where they were born, because I'm one of them. But I don't think it's entirely healthy for your worldview to not never know any life outside of your own. Even for those who move on later in life, I think that's better for your worldview and experience of all the life that there is out there compared to never leaving at all. For the majority of human existence, uh, most people never left 60 miles from where they were born. And in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. And in that same line of thought, travel is now easier than ever, and the distances that used to separate us are growing smaller and smaller. We're becoming a global village, so now it's not a choice to not know what it's like across the street, down the street, across town. Uh, in the past 24 hours, I've talked to people from Colorado, Ohio, and just as I was writing the sentence, I had to go retrieve two supply boxes from the mailroom for some Pacific Crest Trail hikers, one from Arizona and one from my very own San Luis Obispo. Uh, last summer, after graduating, I wasn't able to find a job, so I stayed home most of the summer. While it was a relief to actually catch my breath after finishing high school, it was one of the worst summers I'd ever had. I was bored out of my mind and most of my friends were preoccupied or busy. So remembering how I felt last summer really motivated me to take this job. Uh, although I dislike having to wake up every morning at 6.40, being able to do something and be productive and interact with campers like I did today, I think this was one of my favorite days working, uh, is something I enjoy and is something I like waking up to. Once I get off work at 4, I have until around 11 to do what I want before I should go to sleep. Uh, I've recently been reading a book called The Metaphysical Club, which was given to me to read by Miss Hardcastle. Uh, surprising that even after being graduated from high school, I still have reading assignments from her. But anyways, this book is about the ideas of four post-Civil War authors who heavily influenced the formation of the America we know today. And as I was reading about the formation of the abolitionist movement, I was surprised to find that <clears throat> Ralph Waldo Emerson was not quick to 
join this movement because this movement was a movement. Uh, although the movement had good intentions, Emerson, being a transcendentalist, believed only in self-revelation. He didn't want to be part of something where other people told him what to do or what to think. Eventually, he became part of the abolitionist movement when he witnessed the evils of slavery firsthand. And then he readjusted his views of the other people in the abolitionist movement as other people who also had this self-revelation uh, revealed to them. I've never been, I've never, I've always been hesitant to read into Emerson because he reminds me too much of Miss Moore, who to me is a bit too hard to follow at times because both of their conclusions, Emerson and Moore, are ones they've reasoned personally to themselves. The, these things they've concluded are mainly through experience and understanding. They're not something that you can verbally communicate and instantly click. But once I wrap my head around why Emerson was so hesitant to support the abolitionists, I felt a slight connection with him. I consider, my, I consider myself politically independent and a-religious, and when I was in high school I decided that I didn't want to start out my adult life with all these pre-installed ideologies and worldviews, if there are some ideas or worldviews that I'm meant to believe or agree with, then I want to reach those on my own path and on my own understanding. And so I wanted to build myself up from the ground up. So I tried uh, to scrap most of what I was at that time and tried to restart. And so far it's been quite rewarding because I don't feel like I'm ever being false to myself. And I'm not trying constantly to bend over backwards to defend things I don't necessarily agree with. But I have this itch, and it grows every passing day. I want to know what it's like out there. I've been across the U.S. three times, first on a cross-continental trip with my uh, Grandpa Gary and his 18-wheeler, then to D.C. by plane to visit a lot of historical battlegrounds in the Smithsonian Museums, and finally on a road trip with my mom from Reedley to Disney World and eventually to the, trip, the, to the tip of the Florida Keys. Uh, I enjoyed seeing the landscape, the monuments, and meeting new people, but this didn't really provide me of any context of what day-to-day -day life is like. And yesterday I was reviewing some computer programming tutorials that I have on my computer and became a bit sad that my future possibly will never involve coding. I have all these goals that seem so distant to me at the moment. I want to get a bachelor's in physics, go to grad school, eventually become a professor, write some books, learn how to code, read all of my 110 unread books that I have saved, become better at piano and guitar, and I even have my own social media idea up my sleeve. I just feel like there's too much to do in too little time. I wish there was more life. And some could try to console me by telling me that there's another one after this one, but that's not what I'm wanting. I want to experience all there is here on earth with my fellow human beings. I want to listen to people I want to listen to people tell me what it's like to grow up in Europe and Japan and South America. I want to connect with these different people and get a taste of what other people experience and came to know growing up. One of the easiest ways I'm able to do this is through you guessed it books. Another quote from the series A Song of Ice and Fire uh, is said when Jojen mentions, a reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. The man who never reads lives only one. I hope that someday this itch is relieved a bit. Perhaps I can kill two birds with one stone and go to grad school somewhere abroad. Or maybe I can write code for physics uh, scenarios, but who knows? If you've watched this video up to this point, thank you for watching and I hope my rant hasn't taken too much out of your day. And I guess I shall show you guys without letting my camera fall down. There's as far as I've gone.